Hello YouTube, this is the Ugly Prepper out here in the shed on a rainy day and today the topic of uh, subject or the whatever the conversation is going to be about self-defense and how to defend yourself. Uh, I'm not a self-defense expert. I live and grew up in Alabama so uh, you know, I was basically raised on guns and hunting and rods and reels, but I'm not a firearms instructor. Uh, but, you know, you can have a little bit of knowledge about how to protect yourself and how to protect your family or other innocent people. So, uh, we're going to be talking about, this is a block of wood, y'all, but we're going to be talking about some pew pews, all right? So I'm trying to make this video now while I'm a very small channel uh, so I don't have to try to fight YouTube like later on so we ever get bigger. That's the idea anyway. So we're talking about um, firearms. Alright, let me go ahead and unload this puppy. Alright. This firearm is safe. Uh, I have made it safe. There's no ammunition inside. This is my Glock 19 with the uh, uh, Olight Valkyrie. It's a weapons light for uh, that way you have a, a free hand if you need to have a free hand. You know you don't have to hold a flashlight in one. You know typically the old way. You would hold a flashlight in one hand. And y'all, I'm aiming at a blank wall. I'm not aiming at you. I'm aiming at a blank wall. So anyway, you would typically have to hold your, your flashlight in one hand and your, your gun in the other one. That's the old school way to do it. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be talking about lots of self-defense weapons, not just these. Have a lot of these. Have a lot of knives. Um, and you know, we want to talk about we're not trying to kill anyone. We're not trying to take someone's life. We're simply trying to protect ourselves and our families and others. So um, you don't have to have guns and you don't have to have knives. This is a piece of hickory that I went out and cut off of a hickory tree, a young hickory tree, not a sapling exactly, but a young hickory tree. And this is basically black tape. You can use a bicycle inner tube or something, whatever you have on hand to make a handle out of. I just use black tape. This is a piece of hickory with some black tape for a handle. You don't think you could stop somebody with that thing? I guarantee you. Anyway, let me unload this one while I'm thinking about it. This is my other handgun. Alright. I have two handguns. Somebody might ask, why two handguns? Let me uh, expose the chamber on that one. Okay, it's safe. Um, this is my backup weapon. I know the lighting in here is horrible. I'm trying to help it. Uh, this is my Glock 42. This was, I bought this one before the 43s came out. So this is a 380, which is basically a 9mm short. Uh, this will not shoot a 9mm, but a 380 and a 9mm are very similar. The 9mm bullet is simply longer. It has more powder, more charge. And more lead. Uh, this is a 9mm. This is my little 380. A lot of times, this is in my pocket. People just don't know it. Let me let this dog in. It started to rain, y'all. Let me pause it here for a second. Alright, we're back. Um, so, not only guns and knives, flashlights, um, as you can see, this one is very bright. Uh, you know, you, yeah, this is a tactical 
It has the strobe and all that. Um, types of the flashlights are good. I'm going to try to show y'all this. Um, let me see if I can find out where the camera is. You see the, the bezel on this flashlight? That thing has got little sharp things on the end. And uh, if you hit somebody across the face with that, that is going to hurt. There we go. That's a better picture of it. This is a bush nail. This is one I just bought at Walmart. I don't have uh, an O-Light. Those things are expensive. But uh, you see this flashlight has an end on it. And it's for self-defense purposes. Um... Arkansas Living's going to say this is an Arkansas toothpick. Uh, but we call this in Alabama, we call it an Alabama toothpick. This is an Alabama toothpick, Arkansas. I know you're watching this. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, oil and grease on this one. This one's been put up for long-term storage. I don't know if you can see all that oil residue on it. But, uh... You know, if you're putting up a knife for long-term storage, you need some sort of uh, anti-rust stuff to put on it. This type of knife is made for one thing, and I bet you could guess what it is. Look at the tip on that bad boy. All right, so that's my Arkan, that's my Alabama. Almost said it. That's my Alabama toothpick. You know, always have a good sheath. Very important to protect yourself. You don't want to injure yourself. Um, you know, um, people down here, we have hunting knives. This is one of my hunting knives. Uh, there's black tape on it because it has my middle name on it. Uh, a very dear friend of mine made this for me. My dad h actually had this made for me when I was like uh, 11 or 12 years old. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually a picture of a deer on the end of it. And, uh, very nice deer stag hunting knife with my name engraved into it. It's just important to have uh, ways to protect yourself. Uh, and this is not all my knives. I'm not showing everything I have. For those of y'all that go, don't show everything you got. I'm not. This is another knife that was made for me by a dear friend. His name is Jeff. This knife, uh, he forged this knife and made it. It's made out of a lawnmower blade. If you can see that little round hole right in there, that's the center of the lawnmower blade he made this knife out of. And uh, so, uh, but I'm very blessed to have friends that make me knives and stuff like that. This is one you could, uh, this has a good Kydex holster on it. You hear that lock in when it locks in. You could put this, you could wear it, you know, around your neck if you had to. Um, options. Have options. Have ways to defend yourself. If nothing else, make you something like this. Uh, like I said, it's not about taking lives, y'all. It's about uh, stopping the threat. Here's an old camp knife it's actually kind of a shortened down bushwhacker style I don't know I guess you'd call it a short machete it's got a saw back on it you know that's uh, one I guess you could call this a survival knife or some type of camp knife have a sheath with it as well it's very old it's been around a while so yeah, um, you know, I have lots of knives, lots of knives here on the table. This particular one uh, has camouflage pattern on it. I've always keep a little paracord on stuff. I don't know how to tie all those fancy fancy paracord things. I just put a bunch of knots in it. I know it's kind of ugly looking, but hey, if you need some paracord, there's a little bit on that knife. This is one of my barrels that goes to one of my other pew pews. It's a shotgun, shotgun barrel. I have a couple of barrels that go with my shotgun. Shotgun is an excellent home defense weapon. Even if you don't have nothing but uh, 
turkey load or something to, to that effect if you can't afford the buckshot um you know you can uh, you can stop a threat that is for sure Let's see if there's anything else on here that i haven't covered oh smaller pocket knives um this particular one here is a snap-on this is actually made to be more like a razor blade see the kind of a razor tip on that one not to mention my EDC knife this is a cold steel recon one uh, very excellent knife it has that triad lock it is one of the most strongest folding knives I believe you can buy very strong folding knife okay that's my EDC knife but um I use this block right here this this piece of wood uh, you know I can stick my finger in there we can use this for training if you're gonna have one of these um, if you can and I'm not gonna stand here and act like I went to training courses because I have it uh, I haven't been able to afford to go to training courses because we're on a budget here you know but uh, if you can swing it go get the training on these very good to have training especially if you've never handled a weapon before or a, a handgun or any type of firearm you know like I said I grew up on these things um, so I know them pretty well I'm sure there's more I can learn you know uh, I'm sure there's more I can learn about handguns but uh, anyway um, that's what I wanted to talk about today uh, it's going to be a shorter video than yesterday, but uh, y'all have a way to protect yourself. Uh, and, you know, when I'm standing in line at the bank or in the store and I've got my weapon on me, I'm not thinking just to myself. I'm thinking if something goes down, I want to be able, I want to be able to protect people, uh, including myself. And, uh, you know, it's all about stopping the, the criminals. Guns in the hands of good guys can stop bad guys very effectively, okay? Again, flashlights. I'm going to quote Such on this, uh, the sensible prepper. Flashlights are one of the number one tools used in uh, self-defense again look at that bezel on that flashlight if you smash somebody in the face with that it's gonna hurt and another thing if you're strobing let me see if i can get it if you're strobing somebody you are blind very uh, that look good you are blind if you're being strobed with one of these flashlights this one will strobe as well on this gun right here okay so blind them and then stop them all right blind them stop them pepper spray also a good uh a good route to go is have some pepper spray um anyway i hope this is helping people you know good uh, if you're gonna have a handgun I don't know if you can see that have some good self-defense rounds I know they're hard to find right now but uh, a good nine millimeter or this here particular one's a 380 where's that nine a good hollow point nine millimeter round will stop somebody you know people have to live with their choices if you stopping them means that they pass away they should have rethought their uh, decision to break into your house or try to take what's yours or try to take your life or rape you or whatever you, know, you can have something as simple as this and you know 
for knife fighting uh like angry prepper if you watch angry prepper he he went and took a lot of training on fighting with knives because he i don't think he has any firearms yet but uh i would go more with just you know wait until they turn the other way pull it out and go for it uh i would not just square off with a criminal with a knife in your hand because you could very well get hurt they could take it away from you uh, again, I'm no kind of self-defense expert. Anyway, y'all, it's raining in Alabama today. And uh, among my other chores, I thought I would make a quick video about stopping the threat. Again, these. You can stop somebody with that, you know. A neck knife is a good thing to have. You can wear it under your clothes. People don't know you got it, but the thing about a neck knife is, it's uh, if you've got it hanging, you know, you can pull it out. But uh, if it's in your clothes, you're not gonna have easy access to it. So I tend to roll with the uh, stuff in my pocket, like my EDC stuff. I keep it in my pocket. I wear uh, Carhartt jeans and they have little side pockets on them, little slender tool pockets or whatever. And uh, so I keep my EDC right there. And uh, this is my EDC flashlight that I keep until I can afford one of those fancy fancy O lights. Keep it in your pocket. Thanks for watching y'all. It was good to be on with uh, Trusting God First this morning. Uh, Hope y'all just continue to watch the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Appreciate you watching. This is Ugly Prepper. We're going to go do some inside work today. Y'all have a blessed one.